Planet Earth is what it's all about. Our spaceship, our home, our home spaceship, which is a uh, incredibly resilient but uh, precious vehicle that we all are now inhabiting. And what Virgin Galactic is about is about opening up space, uh, democratizing space, enabling more people and more activities in space. And that's our whole goal. And what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about what's happening with our company, but also to tell you a little bit about what's happening in space in general over the course of the next few uh, minutes. One of the themes that I want to share with you is the incredible activity that we're going through when it comes to space exploration today. We live in a golden era of space travel and space discovery with amazing discoveries happening on Pluto and Saturn, Mars, other moons and, and Jupiter. It's really just an incredible time uh, to be part of the discovery that's going on. So a key part of that um, effort has been, of course, robotic exploration, which is something that has uh, just revealed all kinds of um, incredible insights about our solar system and about our universe over the past um, decades. I want to focus on something else, which is space travel around planet Earth. Really, the key part of enabling our space dreams is access to space, whether it's suborbital journeys or orbital journeys. And for me, this perspective of space is something that inspires uh, our work at Galactic a lot because we believe that the perspective of space is something that's going to be very important to the future of solving some of the, the world's biggest challenges. And I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through the presentation. So an interesting statistic for you, only about 500 people have ever been to space. That to me is a pretty small number. We have been exploring space with human astronauts and cosmonauts and taikonauts. Um, for you know, over 50 years now, and having only 558 people go, it seems like a sort of a small number when you consider the vast number of people who have been uh, going up in, in airlines or other things in, into the air. And you can see that the diversity of this group is fairly constrained in terms of nationality. What's exciting to me about Galactic is that we already have about, uh, well, over 600 people signed up. So once we start going, we'll soon double the number of people going into space, triple it, quadruple it, and on from there. And I think that that's a really interesting moment that we live at, the moment when we go from a time when most people have not met an astronaut to a, a time when almost everyone knows uh, someone who's been to space. And we're going to live through this transition over the course of the next uh, few years. So let's start with this human spaceflight vehicle that most people know, which is the space shuttle. Now this was a reusable vehicle in sort of the broadest possible term, but in, in practice it wasn't very reusable. It was uh, almost rebuildable. Um, and so this, this cost about a billion dollars to fly every time it went to space. And you can understand why only 500 people have gone to space when we're using technology that takes about a billion dollars to get into space each time it goes. It was a spectacular machine and it did incredible things, but what it didn't do so much was open up space to the rest of us because the costs of it still stayed fairly high. And so that's what we're really thinking about now is how, how, what are the ways that we can um, dramatically lower the cost of space, which will then in turn enable so much more activity uh, to occur. So this vehicle is called Spaceship One, and this was a, a historic vehicle which flew to space in 2004 as part of something called the X Prize. And it was a prototype, essentially, to demonstrate the following proposition, that a small group of people, privately financed, could actually send uh, a person to space um, and bring them back safely to Earth. And so this, this project was run by a company called Scaled Composites and a guy named Bert Rutan. It was funded by um, Paul Allen, who I think uh, may have been around this week somewhere in Davos. And what the basic architecture was, and I'll show you a picture of it, we would have this, this carrier aircraft that would take it up to aviation altitude and sort of take advantage of the technologies that we already know about with, uh, with aviation. And then it would release the vehicle once it got up to a normal aviation altitude, and you can see that in a moment. It would sort of release, and then the rocket motor would fire, and uh, up they would go. And so this is a, a suborbital journey. You would go up into space, you wouldn't go into orbit, but you would go up to space altitude, and you can see it gets going pretty quick there, experiencing about three or four Gs and the wonder of weightlessness and, and space altitude. So this was a prototype, and now what we're doing at Galactic is we're trying to essentially uh, commercialize that technology to enable more people to go into space. If that was Spaceship One, uh, we now are working on Spaceship Two. 
Here's a little clip from our rollout ceremony that we did in February of this year. And you can see there's Richard Branson in a, in a coming in. And, um, and he was excited uh, about that. And, and uh, this is a bigger vehicle, as you can see. It's up to six people in the back and two pilots. It's a beautiful craft, and we're really looking forward to uh, the test flight program, which will be occurring over the course of this year. And the uh, intention is the same basic architecture. This is a picture from uh, a past uh, flight test program. So the vehicle is carried up to aviation altitude. It's released. The rocket motor fires, and uh, it then goes up into space, uh, giving people a journey. And this is a, this is a picture over Mojave, California. There you can see it shooting up. Uh, that's the human spaceflight side of Virgin Galactic, but I also want to talk to you about another area that's going on in, in space, which is really exciting, and that's the area of small satellites. And we have people here in Davos who are working on this subject. And what's exciting about this is that it's an opportunity um, for really anyone to put uh, a package, um, an in instrument, an experiment, a commercial product into space. And what's going on now is a uh, we're building a, a, a rocket to put those satellites into orbit, but I really want to focus a little bit on why. Why does that matter? So um, let's talk about the big change that's happening in, in satellites today. So this is what satellites used to look like, and I'm simplifying a little bit here. They were sort of big, big objects that would take a lot of effort to put into space, that would cost a lot of money to put into space, and they would do amazing things, but it would take a lot of effort. And, and so what's happening now is this big shift towards smaller satellites. This is actually roughly a real size, about 10 centimeters on a side. These are called CubeSats. And the amazing thing about this is that they're relatively affordable to build. So wow, this type of object might cost 50 million, 100 million, even a billion dollars. Uh, you can produce these things for uh, tens of thousands of dollars. And what that means is that um, space and space instruments and the benefits of space are now being opened to um, everyone from schools to businesses to even, even individuals could send up their own satellites and start deriving the benefits of space. So what can we do with um, these small satellites? We have uh, Will Marshall here from Planet today and, and various other people. We can drive tremendous products that help us improve our lives here on planet Earth. That, that's very important because I, I do believe that space can offer tremendous benefits uh, to life on Earth, whether it's through navigation or weather prediction and, and all the other things here, communications, disaster response, environmental quality. Uh, healthcare and, and other aspects. So I just want to wrap up um, in the last uh, couple minutes here to talk about the future um, because that's what we're all here for, right? Um, and the future of space. So when I was growing up, I was inspired by images like this, which actually many of them came from the 50s and 60s. And what's really interesting is that we're now starting to actually build some of these things today. So reusable spaceships are now a reality. We are going to be seeing a variety of different craft uh, be developed and put into service over the coming years. And what that will do is it will bring down the cost of space access and then allow us to start doing more and more activity in space, whether it's sending people into space or sending small satellites into space. And those benefits will accrue uh, to the people of, of planet Earth. As we go forward in time, let's look out, you know, uh, five, 10, and, and ensuing decades, what will we see? We'll see, I think, an incredible amount of things happening. We could think about things like space solar power. It's not feasible today because it costs too much to, to put things into space. But if we can lower that cost, we could actually have base load clean energy coming down from space. And we have uh, uh, President of Caltech here uh, who's doing some amazing work, uh, whose people are doing amazing work in that. You could think about asteroid defense. You know, there's a great line about why the dinosaurs went away, and it's because they didn't have a space program. And we do, and we really need to make sure that we uh, do do uh, you know, what we need to do to make sure that our, our home spaceship is, is protected. And as we look out uh, into the universe, we, we may be able to find other signs of life and, and various other things. So at the end of the day, um, what is it all? Why does it matter? We're all part of a great adventure, and that's the adventure of learning about our universe and learning about our home planet and our solar system. But I really do think that as you learn more about the solar system, you understand how precious planet Earth, our home spaceship, really is. And that's why I think that we, we are of the firm belief that as more and more people go into space and as more and more people are able to take advantage of space, um, they will recognize the fragility and the importance of our, of our spaceship 
uh, Spaceship Earth, and that that uh, will play a great part of the um, great challenges that we have in front of us. Thanks for your time.